All right, everyone. The other day, Rand Paul came out and officially endorsed the idea that Trump should pardon uh, Edward Snowden, making the, the point all Snowden did was disclose unconstitutional uh, wiretapping that was going on involving an egregious abuse of the Fourth Amendment, which was indeed agreed uh, with by federal court thereafter. Um, Trump, I believe, called Snowden a traitor at one point, but I think that he should pardon him. And another one is Julian Assange. I wouldn't stop there. I would pardon literally anybody that has been uh, thrown in prison or is being headhunted after who's been involved in whistleblowing should get a pardon. If Trump did that, I'll tell you why he should do that. Not for pragmatic reasons having to do with, with liberty or anything like that, because that's not where Trump mainly operates from. Trump mainly operates from what's good for Trump. Trump can win over the hearts and minds of the entire left and contrast himself with an incoming Biden administration that will absolutely, definitively be abusive to the Fourth Amendment, that will explicitly headhunt whistle whistleblowers, just like the Obama admin did on a scale never before seen. There will be surveillance, there will be a lack of protection of people's civil liberties, and Trump can cast himself off as the eventual I told you so candidate or the I told you so iconic historical figure that eventually, long term, will be ranked considerably higher than Biden could ever hope to be. Biden is going to be a failure, fundamentally. Certainly be a failure on war. Uh, he's going to probably put troops back into all the places Trump is drawing them down in. And that's, by the way, this is, that's, again, Trump being Trump for Trump. It's not because Trump is desperately anti-war. No, I mean, he didn't uh, really draw things down for four years. He waits till the last hours of his administration, basically. Um, that's strategic uh, placement. Uh, he wants Biden to have to increase the troop levels in those countries. When it gets reported on, the left will attack Biden. Oh, why are you putting the troops back? That's one of the few things that Trump did well. What Trump is doing is setting a long-term game, a, a huge trap for Biden, wherein the first things he has to do in his administration will be extremely unpopular and cripple his presidency. Trump is giving this nation the biggest gift he can give it right now. A crippled Biden who almost becomes a lame duck in the first hundred days. Good. I think that's wonderful. If you can cripple him enough, then he can't get anything accomplished. Midterms come along, an obstructed Biden looks weak, literally old and haggard. He gets completely crushed in the House and in the Senate by the Republicans, and he gets removed from office, potentially. I hope that the red wave is big enough to do that. I hope they impeach and remove Joe Biden for his various high crimes and misdemeanors that he will certainly be uh, uh, doing. Uh, every president does. <laughs> you show me the man, I will show you the guilt. Um, it's just a matter of whether you have the political gumption to do so, the votes to do so, and the investigative apparatus to find that guilt. And I think the Republicans potentially will have that. So I think that Trump, uh, for purely strategic reasons, should go, go, go to the left on the issue. You'll, you'll get Jenk Zuger praising you. And then you, here's what will happen. If you pardon Assange, you pardon Snowden, you pardon Kim.com, who was chased. If he had, he had a mega upload site. He gets chased in New Zealand. They're still trying to fucking extradite the poor dude. I don't even like him. He's like a total socialist. Can you imagine an army of socialists praising Donald Trump? And then when Joe Biden gets in and is increasing troop totals and attacking journalists like Obama did with the AP when it was uh, trying to investigate him, uh, when he has scandals, and the left will attack Biden. He'll lose, uh, he'll lose the entire core support base that was actually enthusias enthusiastic enough to care. Not, not enthusiastic for Biden, but enthusiastic politically. And, and the group that has the most Trump derangement syndrome. Trust me, if the Trump derangement syndrome thing dries up because Trump starts endearing himself to a bunch of progressives, it's game over for, for fucking Beijing Biden. His presidency will be a fucking disgrace anyway. It'll be a bigger disgrace if Trump lays enough traps. Pardon Snowden, he did nothing wrong. Assange did nothing wrong. Assange never hacked anything. Never did anything illegal. And yet he's rotting in a cell. Now I realize that that doesn't necessarily mean he gets released because I think the UK has got him in on charges and occasionally the Swedish keep going back to that bullshit long disproven sex assault allegation against him that they used to chase him into the embassy in the first place. Um, he did nothing wrong and, and having the US officially say, hey look, it's fine, I think is a good thing. I think it would be very, very good. Trump should go down the list. He should pardon every person that's in, essentially, anyone in federal prison who's not in on like terrorism or violent crime charges, Trump should just issue a blanket pardon and clean out the federal prison system and let these people out. Oh, can you imagine? Can you imagine? Because the left keeps arguing we shouldn't even have prisons by and large. 
Can you imagine how difficult the MSM would have it trying to reconcile attacking Trump on that without pissing the left off? And Trump's fans are, are I, I do have to say, some of them are a bit cultish. They don't care. Trump could argue for socialism and some of these people would magically start supporting it and say, oh, I guess capitalism wasn't so great after all. That's a large core of the Republican base. And he's fucking the Republicans if he does that too. The Republicans that did stab him in the back preemptively and didn't wait for a SCOTUS decision. Now he can throw some major shade on them. He could destroy, Trump could come back and destroy the Republicans. Midterms come along and says, no, don't bother to vote. Fuck you. Now these people are weak. Get some new blood in there and vote for them. He can field his own sub-party, his own sub-movement of, of America Firsters within the GOP. He could seize control of the fucking party. Probably the best thing for it. At least he was able to win. <laughs> it's funny in the midterms, yeah, they, they, they grow their Senate lead uh, and the Democrats fall like 20 seats short of what they wanted in the House and somehow this was considered a resounding rebuke and, re and rebuttal against Trump. Uh, it was the funniest thing ever. And Rand Paul's a great guy. If Rand Paul uh, runs, I would expect he'd get the America First endorsement. He's basically the only viable, the only Republican I can see that's truly viable other than him is Ted Cruz. He rubs me the wrong way, generally speaking. I don't know that he really has aspirations to run again anyway. Because um, he, he sort of became the, uh, the also-ran. And there was enough bad blood between him and Trump that the Dems could exploit that. On the Dems side, I don't see, I don't see anybody. I don't see a single qualified person. <laughs> at least a qualified person who's still viable. You know, when you run a presidential campaign that's a total disaster, like Gillibrand, Julian Castro, it, it sort of damages your long-term chances. Now, the exception, oddly enough, is Joe Biden and Hong Kong. He won in a historic landslide, uh, by the way, and all that bullshit. Yeah. Uh, pardon Snowden. Pardon Assange. Pardon Manning. Uh, the pardon Kim.com. Pardon everyone. Fucking issue as many federal pardons as you can. Collapse the goddamn system and declass everything. Trump's been doing that. Where do you think the CCP leak actually came from? Now, I'll, I'll give you three guesses, and uh, all the answer is all, all three of them is Trump and Pence. That's about all. Peace out.